you're very welcome to this week's Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. I'm Journey Khan. I am delighted to be joined by two Tipperary senior Camogie players who also won county finals at the weekend. Uh, Laura Captain, Claude McIntyre and Marion Campion from Drum and Inch. Uh, uh, of course, Laura won the Junior B county final on Sunday and Drum and Inch captured the senior county final on Saturday. Uh, ladies, you're both very welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks very much, Charlene. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, I suppose, Claude, first we'll go to you. Um, Laura, I suppose, had suffered a heartbreak of four final losses. And did that bring added pressure, you know, going into this final and knowing how much, I suppose, all the players and the supporters and the club really badly wanted to win it? Did you feel extra pressure this year more than any other year? Or? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I suppose sure. Every year there's a huge build up to it in the club and I, like it turned into a bit of a joke, I suppose, after the soreness wears out of it. But uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, the, we're really nervous now this year because we probably had lost a few girls, you know, with injuries and girls being away in Dubai. And like we probably had stronger panels maybe other years, but Geez, yeah, we definitely dug deep anyway this year, and geez, we were delighted to win it now this year. Brilliant. And I suppose for you, likewise, Miriam, you have different circumstances. You were going for three in a row, went in, I suppose, favourites in uh, many people's eyes. At the same time, you knew how good Clonty were, you knew, you know, you know the opposition well. Did that all bring its own kind of pressure coming into Saturday's final? Yeah, I think there was a pressure on us as such. Uh, we had we back penalty in the first round of, of the championship. And, you know, as the games and the weeks went on, teams were improving all the time. And, you know, we we got bet then by Anna Carty and Canorty then as well. They were bet by Anna Carty. And then they turned that around in a county semi-final. And you know, they had improved immensely um, over a couple of, couple of weeks. And, you know, they, they, they were really coming to it. And... You know, we had heard promising things coming from Canolty and, you know, the key players back um, in and among um, the team as well. And with every week, they were getting better and better. And, you know, we knew what we, we were going to get with Canolty. You know, we played them in a county semi-final knockout hurling back in 2018 and they wiped us out of the water. And, you know, we did beat them last year. We got the better of them in the county final. But we knew that we were going to have it all to do. Um, there was that extra bit of pressure um, going for the three in a row. And, you know, we were delighted to get out, it, out with the win on, um, on Saturday. And I think everyone was just absolutely thrilled because it was a, a hard fought, you know, championship from, from start to finish, you know, between the group games, quarterfinal, semifinal. There was no, no, easy, no easy way or no easy run in, in this year's championship at all. Certainly was hard earned. Um, county finals are never easy one. Um, I suppose, Claudia, your game was, you know, was really tight affair. Um, I think you were behind the point at half time or at the water break, three points to two, and then you were a goal down at half time, one five to five. Um, but then by the second half water break, you turned it around and you were up a um a point. You got four points uh without reply in the third quarter. What was said at half time, sort of uh maybe get you going there and, and come out stronger there in the second half? Yeah, well, uh, our manager, Ken Hogan, and uh, my dad and is involved as well. And we had another lad, Mark Houlihan. The three lads had a stern word at us at halftime because really now we hadn't shown up really at halftime and hadn't shown what we'd uh, been practicing at all. So um, Ken Hogan, yeah, definitely had <laughs> had to have a few words with us. And I suppose it worked then at halftime because I suppose from the next 15 minutes, we started to dominate a bit more and we got a lot more into it. Um, there was a strong breeze on the day as well, but I yeah. know like the breeze wouldn't win the match for you either. But no, yeah, delighted now with how it worked out. Um, we definitely had to dig deep. I, like I think we went at some point there in the second half, we went up um six points and you know, you think you might have a bit of breathing space and then they came back into the match and we only won by a point in the end. And oh, when it got near the end, I was counting down the seconds. I thought the ref would never blow the whistle. Um we were just like lucky in one way, but I suppose when you think back of all the other years we were unlucky. So 
I suppose he just kind of got the break on the day and uh, look, we were delighted with how it worked out. Yeah, I suppose McCarkey got a penalty there late in the second half. I think it was Katrina Walsh scored it and did it come to, did it come into your heads? Oh God, here we go again. You know, this is slipping yeah. away from us. Yeah, definitely. Jeez, it did cross my mind. But uh, thank God, like, um, the girls on the team have great experience and I suppose we've been in that position a few times so I suppose we've learned to just kind of keep the heads and just keep going and you know like just trying to stay alert I remember we kind of let it slip maybe in the second part of the second half and we they got like a quick free to a girl that was loose and they took a quick sideline and I think we just kind of copped onto that um, a bit more then as the second half progressed and um yeah we just got the result that we wanted in the end I suppose and um yeah uh we just had to be a bit more clinical than we had been other years very good and Miriam was probably the opposite for you you had a great opening half uh you went in a half time two goals up and then Clonty I suppose took over in the in the third quarter um got four unanswered points you didn't score at all in the third quarter um, I just wonder at the water break then was there a few stern words spoken to you or you seem to come out after that water break and kind of take back control of the game Yeah I suppose the third quarter in particular we were very disappointed with our performance in that you know Canolte really took over that that quarter I suppose they had half time as well to to reassess and they did in, in, in spades and they came out and you know, I thought their wing forward line in particular, Sarah Friday, um, caught the van and Casey Hennessy were extremely dominant. I know any any time they got the ball, they they were head down and they were they were aiming for the black spot. And you know, they they did really perform in that third quarter. And you know, we were we were extremely frustrated with ourselves. And you know, we were delighted that that third um water that second water break just um with fifteen to go came at that stage and. I think we were a bit panicky on the sideline. So, you know, going out for the last 15, you know, we tried to compose ourselves, just slowly and surely get back into it. I think we had a free um, just on that reset and that put us another point up. And from there, you know, we did get um, a score or two and Quiva then saving, saving caught the van's penalty. I think that was... That was a real um, boost for us and it kind of kicked us on then to, to pull clear, I think. Yeah, I was wondering, what, what were you thinking when, when Kosh was stepping up to take that penalty? I suppose you were four points up. If she had scored it, it had brought it back to one and you knew there was going to be a minute or two to play. It must have been anxious moments for you. Uh, it was, but I think we have full, full confidence in Quiva. She's been, I've, I think I've played on every team with her all up along and Quiva is just a phenomenal goalie and I think she would have been confident in herself she's having a savage year and you know she know caught as well and um, you know caught stepping up to that I suppose it could it could have went in very easy but we were back on our own and in fairness Quiva she pulled it off and we were all delighted and very proud of her afterwards Brilliant and for Claude, for you, I just thought it was interesting watching the game back. Uh, you play midfield with your club. Um, you know, you put in a huge shift, loads of solar runs and striking the ball into the forwards. Um, it's different, I suppose. We'd be used to seeing you maybe corner forward or wing forward, tip seniors. And do you like being out midfield and, and the change from, from playing in the forwards with the county or which would you prefer? Or Yeah, definitely. I think I prefer the, having the midfield role. You know, I... I'm not really stable to one position and I have a bit of a free reign and you know um like I think one stage I found myself down near in the full back line and I was like geez I haven't been down this end of the field and I know how long so um no it's it's great now and like I think it was good like because we have we have that we have a few good girls up front like Elaine Hawk and Celine Cleary and we them two girls like they're well able to score so I didn't mind taking on that running kind of um, role for the match and trying to carry the ball and deliver it into them because they're well able to get the ball over the bar. And I suppose at the end of the day, it's who scores the most. <laughs> and um, yeah, so no, it like it did work out um, playing midfield. I suppose I've been playing there um, throughout the last few years. So um, I'm kind of comfortable playing there with my club, but. I think I do prefer the corner forward role then with Chip. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Um, then I just speaking about McCarkey. Then I suppose 
you know, a lot of, a lot of people would have tipped them going into the into their final. They had won their their league. There's some excellent experienced players like Marianne Murphy, Trina Walsh. Um, I, you hadn't met them in the championship, but you probably had played them in the league, or right, or what? What were you? You know, who were you wary of, or what were you expecting a tough game? And yeah, geez, definitely now. So the last two years, we met Mike Harkey in both semi finals, and we managed to beat them both years. So I suppose we kind of had that under our belt, but we knew that they had won the under 16 and the under 14, so that they'd loads of young ones and you know we we'd be uh we'd be a bunch of kind of experienced players so trying to keep uh like the young lot girls uh, away from the goals was definitely something that we had to think about before going into the match and um yeah we just i suppose um our composure on the ball on the day just kind of and our experience showed i'd say um that we were just able to get that you know a little bit of an edge over them but yeah, like coming into it, we didn't, we were definitely considered the underdogs because, you know, they've had had such a good year with the club there. They got to the football semi-final or final, I think. So um, like they're definitely probably maybe the fitter side, but I suppose when it came down to the hurling, we definitely um, pulled it off. Um, and yeah, and that's, I suppose that's it. Yeah, I suppose a lot, a lot of... Um coverage made of the fact that Ken Hogan was the manager and he went on afterwards and managed uh, St. Rhinos to a county final in Offaly. Um, so what's it like to have someone like Ken managing the side, you know, obviously a huge uh, uh, figure in Tipperary GA and uh, such an experienced manager and obviously past player. Yeah, oh my God, Ken, I like, we're so lucky to have him in a club, in the club and he would absolutely die for the club if you asked him to do it. Um, he put in a serious effort as well as um, two other lads that were involved, Aidan and Mark, um, just a tremendous effort overall. And like Lara being such a small club and we've always struggled with numbers. Like, um, And it's obviously frustrating for Ken coming over to training and maybe only like nine or ten girls over training. But um, yeah, I was so delighted for him on the day. He was hoping to get away with 10 minutes to go from our match. But our match was just so tight. He wasn't able to leave. But he got over then to, to Rhina's match and they won as well. And he came back to us then for the celebrations. So Ken had a brilliant day all around. And um, yeah, it was just a brilliant day for Laura as well because the parish really did need a big lift on the day. Like the our senior lads team got relegated there two weeks ago, and then our under twenty ones who are joined with Shannon Rovers got knocked out as well just the day before on Saturday. So yeah, Laura were kind of down in the dumps the last few weeks. So we're just delighted we got to give him a lift. And you know, Ken, I was listening to him there on the radio. He was on, on news talk, and he said that it was his sweetest win with any um team he's ever managed. So. That's just, you know, unbelievable because people kind of, you know, might put up their nose at Junior B and he's won loads of county titles with Offaly. I think he's won the last three with Rhinos. So it's just a huge compliment to us. And I suppose it just reflects in the effort that he's put in and that how happy he was to see us get over the line. That's brilliant. So great to hear that. And uh, finally, Claude, I was just watching, obviously, Ireland's Fitness Family two weeks ago. Uh, I couldn't believe when I saw that you were on it because I was like, where do you get time between Lara and Tikmogi to be to be taking part in Fitness Family? Or when, when was that recorded or was it recorded? Yeah, adrenaline geez, Yeah, we kept that on the down low now. We made sure that not to tell anyone. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You, you might know me that well, but I I like the quiet life, so I <laughs> won't want to tell anyone. But uh, <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, that was filmed there over the summer. My brother Niall. Uh, it was kind of mentioned around the house the odd few times, and yeah. So I, my brother Niall took matters into his own hand and said he'd uh, enter us into the competition. And then when he came home, then one evening he told us we were on it and. I suppose there was nothing we could do by then. But um, yeah, so we the, we were on it there the first week there last week and we got through it. So we're on this weekend in the quarterfinals. So please God, we get through that as well. <laughs> Wait and see. Very good. And uh, what's it like? Uh, you've done a Colcallan is your 
is your coach, isn't it? Yeah, Donica, yeah, brilliant coach now. We were really, we were delighted now when we heard that he was our coach. Um, you know, you couldn't have had a nicer man over us. He was, you know, really laid back. You couldn't but like him. <laughs> and uh, all, everyone on our, like Owen and Niall and Aidan had a great relationship with him as well. So it just made the experience that bit more enjoyable. And, you know, it's something that we really... And did you train loved. for it? Like, would you have to, did you prepare for it and train for it or just do your normal... Um, well, we, we were training, I was training uh, Camogie anyway, and Owen and Niall would have been training with Laura at the time, so we had been fit enough anyway. Uh, my dad now, I remember one morning looking out from my window and seeing him running around the field outside our house in his bare feet, so I don't know, he, he was doing a bit, uh, just, he'd, he'd go up and milk the cows and then he'd go for his run, so I suppose he was he was kind of worried that he'd be the one letting us down, but geez, no, he, he, I'd say his back was, will be sore by the end of it because <laughs> he ended up carrying us through it. <laughs> Very good. We look forward to keeping an eye on you in the next few weeks. Uh, Mary, are many signed the champions entering Ireland's Fitz family next year? At- <laughs> oh, Jesus, I highly, <laughs> I suggested it once or twice, Mason, but um, it wasn't really taken too well. And I, a few crosswords are said back to me now, so, um, yeah, I, I highly doubt it. I don't even know what I make the team anyway, so I, I wouldn't be putting in the application anyway. No, we'll let Claude's family carry the flag there for today. <laughs> yeah. um, just finally, Miriam, as well, what, what was it like, I suppose, to score a goal in a, in a senior county final? And um, is it something, I suppose, you know, you got early in the game, you seem to take on your marker and just go for it. Is it something maybe that you that you spoke about before the match, try and get an early goal or to take on your your marker? No, absolutely not. You know, I, I think I started on the wing and, you know, I'd been bet at three or four balls and the, the game started in at a quick enough pace and I was pure struggling there. So um, I called I call him and I said, go out there for a couple of minutes and give me a break in here. <laughs> and all kind of just came in, you know, and... Um, I don't know, there's just a bit of space there in behind the full back. So um luckily kinda I kind of fell right for me and you know um it was my cousin Trey's in the goals, but that's something you don't even think of when, when you're in a, in at that stage. And I think you know when you get the chance, um you're always gonna try go for it. I wouldn't be a, a big scorer in any in any sense at all. And it it wasn't something we thought talked about, but it luckily, it worked out for us um, on the day as well. But yeah, well, in fairness, it was a super, super goal to get in a final. And um, look, I'm sure, I'm sure, like Claude, you enjoyed a bit of celebrating. But it's back to training now with a with a monster final this weekend. Yeah, so we training there um, tonight. We we went out on on Saturday and Sunday, and you know the boys said. I've won their, um, you know, their county final inside in the stadium on Sunday. So there was a great buzz around the parish. We all celebrated together, and you know, then back, back to the to the training grounds tonight. And you know, there was there was no um, resting on our laurels. Matthew had aces, and you know, um, we're, we're looking forward to next weekend. We hadn't obviously been thinking about it up till now, but now that it's here, now that it's the week of it, you know, it's it's all totally focused on that and trying to get um you know that monster final medal um this this weekend. Yeah so that's Drum and Inch and Ina Kilimona in uh the twenty twenty Monster Final and that game takes place in Kalidia at half twelve. While on the Saturday we wish Turtle starts with his very best look. Uh they're playing twenty twenty intermediate monster final against Galtier. That game is a double header in Mallow with the junior final. So uh great to have two to be very close monster finals this weekend. Uh, Claude, uh, Miriam, thanks a million. It was great to chat to you after you're winning your your county finals. Laura, we we'll look forward to seeing how Laura get on next year at Junior A and uh, how the back tires get on in the Ireland's Fitness family. So it could be more more silverware coming your way. And uh, Miriam, we're going to hold on to you. We're going to chat about the Junior A uh, final this weekend and just to wish Drum and Inch and uh, Turtle Starts his very best luck this weekend in the Munster final. This already sees the last of the FBD Insurance Adult uh, finals with the meeting of Borland Dwella and Money Gall in the FBD Insurance Junior A final. Money Gall had a 111 to 3 3 win at the weekend over Drum and Inch in their semi final, while Borland Dwella beat Holy Cross 2 8 1 5. 
Um, Miriam, I know you were at that junior A uh, semi final against Roman Inch. Um, you know, Money Gall had the wind uh, in the first half, built up a big lead by half time. I think it was nine, nine points to a goal before Drum came back into it in the second half. And actually, Drum were leading in, in, with only, you know, seconds to go, really. And Money Gall got a late goal. So, um, what, what, what impressed you most about that Money Gall team? Or, yeah, you know, Money Gall looked particularly strong there in the first half, and I suppose the the wind did aid him um in in certain at certain stages, and you know, Drum would have been you know happy going into the final quarter considering you know they were down six points at at um half time, and then you know with with time up, I I think Drum could could be maybe questioning the clock that the ref we would have said that time was definitely up by by the by the finish of it but money goal in fairness to them they banged in that goal um at, at, towards the finish and then followed up with a point and they were definitely deserving of their win and you know they they seem to be extremely um strong this year again and you know they they bet temper more there in the quarter final and Drum, I think Drum drew with Templemore in the group stages as well. So yeah, Money you know, Gall had a big started, had a big win over Templemore in the qualifying three thirteen to five points. Uh, three thirteen was great scoring against Templemore. Like you said, Drum only drew with him. So the the signs were there that Money Gall were going to be very tough opposition in the semi final. Yeah, and it it really is on the day then, and you know they're they're coming up against um a Borland side, and I think Money Gall they they were bet by Borland. Um, you know, in the group stage, but no doubt, when it comes down to the county final, they'd be easy about it, and you you would see Money Gall being in with a right chance there, um, as well in that. And Money Gall, they were in the the final of the junior. Um, you know, they played Nakavilla was only last year. Yeah, and semi and, semi you know, final actually, yeah. Yes, yeah, so semi final. So they weren't far off it either, and. You know, they do have some serious players there. Neve Larkin um got the goal there towards the finish. Murray T and Mary Ryan, you know, they, they do have great experience and youth in, in that team. And you you would say they're in with a fair chance on uh, in, in this final. Yeah, like you mentioned there in the groups, did Mulligan and Borland were in the same group. Uh, Borland topped the group. Morland, or Mulligan came second. They had one one loss, and that was to Borland. It was 2 12 to 2 3. Um, I suppose three points was low scoring. Um, but would you say you wouldn't read too much into group games and it, 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 you know, obviously a final, a knockout is totally different? Uh, yeah, a final is completely different. I think both teams would be definitely, definitely up for it. And, you know, Borland, they do have some some serious players and none more than, you know, Sarah Delaney. She, was, she had a phenomenal year with Tipperary and I think you know, um, she was very unlucky not to not to get that starting position. Um, I think she was definitely deserving of it towards towards the finish of the year. She was absolutely flying it, and I could see her even you know starting um, you know in that corner back position um, in on next year's tip team. So you know they do have um, serious players there, and Cl- or Sarah will lead them out on Sunday, and you know I've no doubt that it will be a cracking final. And just going through some of the stats there, if you, you can go on to Tipperary Komogi website, tipperarykomogi.com and get all the results this year of the Junior A Championship. And I was just going through it. Borland this year scored 10 goals and 70 points so far and conceded 8 goals and 30 points. While um, Money Gall scored 11 goals and 46 points and conceded 8 goals and 38. So both teams conceding similar scoring. Um, both teams scoring t- you know, 10, 11 goals. But I suppose the big one is the Borland have scored 70 points in, in their in the group gauges and the group games and two knockout stages so far. And when he got scored 46 points. So Borland putting up putting up big score and to score 17 points against Balna, 217 to 3 3. Um scored 12 points against Brian Bruce, got 12 points against Money Gall, scoring in um in June, Ray, uh, I think, yeah, they scored three twenty one in the qu- in the quarter final. So they seem to have talent there all over the field that are able to big score, score from distance. Um, I've seen them playing a minor match this year against Rome actually, and they like that they were well able to score from all over the field. Um, some some very strong players. Um, maybe probably maybe more balanced than than Moneygall. Obviously, Moneygall have some key players, Mary Ryan. 
tip senior player, Mareti, and obviously an awfully senior player. So, um, but I think uh, by the looks of it, um, Borland just looked to be a bit more balanced and going into the game with a bit more momentum. But then, like you said, Monigal had the experience, reached the semi-final last year. Borland didn't make it out of the group. So um, all to play for. Uh, that game is on uh, Sunday or Saturday, sorry, at 12 o'clock in the County Camogie Grounds in Drag. Borland and uh, Monigal in the Junior A County Final and uh, we'll have all the score updates on the on the Tiberi Camogie Twitter so looking forward to seeing who'll be crowned Junior A County Champions this year and moving up to Intermediate next year and like we've seen what Nakavilla did this year so there's uh, great prospects for any team that moves up uh, Miriam thanks a million for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast and uh, once again wish you the very best luck in this weekend's uh, Monster Final with Drum and Inch. Um, if you enjoyed our podcast, don't forget to give us a like and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.